marks the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Since then, the Western world has sent billions of dollars of aid in uh, military, financial, and humanitarian aid to Ukraine and imposed almost 13,000 sanctions, mainly financial sanctions, against Russia, trying to weaken the Russian economy. However, Russia's economy has shown a better performance than expected, driven mostly by soaring commodity prices. Let's digest the last year for Russia and the global economy with Chris Weifer. He's general director and CEO of Macro Advisory LLC. Chris, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, when, uh, when Russia's invasion began, it was no secret that it was going to begin. It was widely uh, anticipated by the U.S. and other uh, other Western powers. Uh, the sanctions were dialed up very quickly and very severely. Uh, there was a view, I think, among a lot of people that Russia's economy was going to be significantly hammered and then ordinary Russians would, would feel uh, the impacts of those sanctions. What, what, in fact, have we seen over the past year? Yes, uh, you're quite right. That's exactly what was talked about, uh, particularly in March and April. Uh, and I guess the, and what we've seen, of course, is quite different. We've seen a stronger economic performance, uh, GDP contracted by 2.1%. Uh, the trade surplus, critically, uh, which uh, uh, was at $280 billion, up from 190 in 2021, current account surplus, etc., and other figures uh, also uh, didn't uh, either improved a lot last year or in terms of employment, etc., didn't deteriorate. So we had a much more stable economy. And the reason for that is because while the the US and Europe and, and Canada and others came in uh, with, with sanctions very quickly, they were not able to sanctions some of the key pot, uh, products for which Russia is a major global supplier. So critical, of course, oil and oil products. So Europe is very dependent on oil products, gasoline and diesel, etc. So they had to delay those sanctions for as long as possible. And in fact, the crude oil ban only kicked in in Europe on December the 5th, and the oil products ban only kicked in in fe the 5th of February this month, which means, therefore, that Russia was able to export a significant volume of oil, coal and other materials for a much longer period and therefore earned a lot of money. And that money was used by the government to provide employment subsidies, uh, key industry subsidies, supporting social programs, in other words, to keep the economy uh, tick ticking over. And that meant, therefore, we had a much more stable domestic kind of social political balance and none of the kind of protests or public backlash that was was, was was talked about. We simply didn't have that because, frankly, the economy ticked over. And, and I can say from being in Moscow very often, if you did not look at the news, you really wouldn't know there was a war taking place just down the road. Remind us, uh, so you've told us the, the, the oil sanctions arrive very late. Uh, uh, will they begin to bite over the next six months or a year? We would hope the war ends over that period of time, but there's no sure. indication that it will. Sure. Yeah, no, actually, and, and that actually is absolutely the key question right there. What will be the level of oil, particularly oil exports, uh, now that these, the bans have kicked in? Uh, Russia has been scrambling to find new markets, and it has been largely successful with crude oil, so sending a lot of crude crude oil to India, more to China, to Turkey, and some Asian markets have all been willing buyers of that. Now the problem becomes a lot more difficult with refined product, because that's 2.8 million barrels of oil a day. And the infrastructure for exporting that to other markets in Asia simply isn't there, or we, or we're, or we don't know how much infrastructure is there. And there's also, of course, Russia has been discounting it in order to get the volumes out to keep production up. So there's a combination there. How much oil will Russia be able to physically deliver to the Asian markets having lost Europe and at what price? So for absolute certain, R Russia will earn a lot less this year than it did last year from exports. But the key question is how much less? If it goes down by a lot, let's say by 50 percent, that will put severe strains on, on the budget because clearly the military uh, is an expensive uh, operation. And if the government then has to cut spending on, on other areas of the economy and maybe job supports or social programs, that's where the dynamic will start to change. Uh, and, and that's where you get a much more difficult uh, backdrop for the Kremlin. On the other hand, if they get, say, two-thirds of last year's revenue, then there'll be enough money 
to continue the sort of economic and social supports and the military operations that we're now seeing. So that really is the key figure. And, and there is no clear indication yet as to which way is going. There's been a lot of confusion in, 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 in January as the, 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 the sanctions kicked in, uh, lots of different reports. Uh, but really, everybody in the industry that I talk to, traders and others say, we won't get a clear picture on volume and pricing probably until we get into March. Then we will have a better idea of, uh, of, of what Russia's economic outlook is likely to be for this year. Let's finish with the uh, sanctions that were put on the Russian Central Bank. Uh, they were aimed, I believe, at hampering the ability of the Central Bank to access uh, U.S. dollars and other hard currencies around the world. Sure. Have they had an impact? Yes, uh, and really, I should uh, wheel back uh, and, and clarify a point. When we say the economy is down 2.1 percent and generally was a good picture last year, that is not a uniform picture. Uh, it's the headline, but remember, the state dominates the economy in Russia. There hasn't been that many changes from the old Soviet Union. So the state accounts for about two-thirds of GDP, and therefore it's been able to use its resources in that you know, chunk of the economy to keep the headline uh, numbers down. But below that, if you look at the automobile uh, industry, if you look at the consumer sectors, if you look at kind of more private entrepreneur technology sectors where, where the state is not involved, they have been hammered. The automobile sector, for example, is down 40 percent uh, last year. Retail sales down about 10 percent. And one of the reasons is because that's been one of the effective sanctions, blocking financial transactions, blocking the central bank and putting, blocking some Russian, major Russian banks from SWIFT. It means that Russian companies have not been able to buy uh, components, even those that are not sanctioned, they haven't been able to pay for them. And there's been a great deal of difficulty in normal cross-border trading, which has caused huge, huge disruption to this kind of non-state industrial sector. So uh, we, we can talk about the economy having performed very well at a headline level, but there's real pain in, in some industry like automaking and other be below that. And the central bank sanctions are one of the key reasons for that.